Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk about plasma cutter consumables and specifically the nozzles for the PT and IPT style torches. Since there seems to be quite a bit of confusion, a lot of new people coming into this that don't really seem to understand uh, what all the different numbers are and what they should be setting their amperage to. So hopefully this will help you out a little bit. So basically to start off with, PT uh, is the Tecmo torch. I'm pretty sure that they're the ones that developed this style of torch. IPT is the Innotech version of that, and most of the Chinese copies are labeled as IPT torches. They come in all sorts of varieties, IPT 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and there are machine torch versions av available for certain models. But basically you want to buy whatever consumables for whatever type of torch you have. If you have an IPT 60, which is probably most common with most plasma cutters these days, you buy IPT60 consumables, and there are a few different types. Um, like these ones here are actually pipe cutting nozzles. They work fine just as a standard cutting nozzle. This would be your more standard one for your IPT60 with the broad flat nose on it there. And these are the IPT80. They're a, bit, uh, a little bit bigger nozzle, but that's your standard one for an IPT80. Okay, so what do all the different numbers and designations mean? Well, basically, the size that you see there, the 0.8 millimeter, 0.9, that's the orifice size in the end. That's where your plasma jet's gonna come out of. And these nozzles are all rated for a specific amperage range, which you can see here. Uh, the 1.3 would actually be 70 to 80. I missed a number there, but anyway. So basically how we wanna dial this in is if you have a cut chart that tells you to cut a particular material at a given amperage, you choose the appropriate nozzle which fits into that amperage. Can you cut outside of these amperages? Yeah, of course you can. Um, if you go over, those consumables are not gonna last long. You're gonna blow that nozzle out really quickly. If you go too low, cut quality is going to suffer. Is it possible to get good cut, cut quality You know, with a one millimeter cutting at 25 amps? Of course it's possible. A lot of things are possible, but it's going to take a lot of fiddling. It's not gonna be very repeatable. You're, gonna, you're probably gonna have problems like a lot of dross or inconsistencies um, in your cut edge. The most optimal thing to do is to choose the appropriate amperage for the appropriate nozzle size. So as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, the one on uh, dialing in your cut speed, the Arctoroid works really well in a speed range from about 700 millimeters a minute up to maybe 2800, maybe 3000 millimeters a minute. That's sort of the optimal range. Again, it will work outside of that, but that cut speed within those cut speeds, it tends to work really well. So whatever material we're cutting on, we have a whole range of nozzles that we can choose. And once you figure that out, then that's what you're gonna put in your cut chart. That's what you're gonna use every time. You see in my channel, I cut a lot of 18 gauge material for all my signs and stuff. I've been using a 0.9 millimeter nozzle set to 30 amps. Basically, they last forever, uh, the 0.9s. Normally with most of your IPT nozzles, with good quality ones, 300 pierces is sort of the limit. That's where you'd wanna change them out. I was using a 0.9 for months and never changed it out. I had well over 300 pierces on it. Um, so if you can cut at the lower amperage values, sometimes that can be beneficial. Now, sometimes on certain materials, um, if you don't have good quality nozzles at the lower amperages, the, you may not get as good a cut quality, so do watch out for that. Um, and one thing that I like to do is I never run any of these nozzles at their maximum. Like uh, I'd only run up to maybe 38, maybe 39 amps at the most. It just helps to preserve them a little bit more, but if you're getting them cheap enough and don't care, you know, sure, go ahead and run them at their maximum. It's just more of a chance of a blowout or something like that while you're cutting. And if you have, uh, you know, you could end up ruining a piece very easily if you have a blowout. If I'm cutting eighth inch material or like when I cut the um, Ant Mechanic logo, the Ant Mechanic logo, um, I was running on 332nd uh, hot rolled steel. Uh, I think I was running 48 amps. I was using a 1.0 millimeter nozzle cutting at 3000 millimeters a minute did have some bevel on it, so if I want to eliminate that bevel, I would either slow down my cut speed, or if I wanted to run at 3,000 millimeters a minute, I could bump up the amperage, which would mean that I'd want to bump up my nozzle size. If I wanted to cut at 55 or 58 amps, I'd go up to the 1.1 millimeter. So that's how it works. If you're gonna change your amperage, you need to pick the, the nozzle that fits it best, and that's gonna give you the best chance at a good cut quality. It's gonna keep consistency you would be able to switch to other materials and have it be very close, not have to do as much dialing in every single time. So I hope that makes it really simple and helps some of you out there. Um, 
And the final word on this sort of is that whatever manufacturer you're buying your consumables from, pay attention to what their amperage rating is on their consumables, and that's what I would follow. If you're going with some of the cheaper Chinese consumables, just be aware that not all are created equal. There are some garbage consumables out there, but there are also some that are pretty decent. Okay, so at this point, um, if you're wondering where to get consumables, uh, I can very easily recommend Plasmadin. Most of the consumables that I've been using on this channel have been from Plasmadin. My 0.9 millimeter nozzle um, is one of their made in Italy ones, whatever that means. However, it's different from their other ones. I don't really know, but uh, that's the one that I really abused, especially when I was dialing in the torch height control. Um, and it lasted for forever, but I've also used their 0.8 and uh, some of their other nozzles. They work really great. This isn't a sponsored video. I just bought and have been using them and uh, seem like a really good value. If you want a uh, sort of a middle of the road price with good quality consumables, definitely check out Plasmadin, uh, plasmadin.com and he sells stuff on eBay. So definitely check them out if you're looking for consumables, um, not only for plasma, but he's got some other stuff as well. And uh, doing a really killer job with uh, machine torches. Um, I'm hoping that maybe at some point I'm gonna get one of his machine torches and uh, hook it up to the arc droid. So anyway, just thought I'd mention that. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helped you out and sort of clarified that a little bit. And we'll see you all next time.